Got a video about section 5.5 in Stein's elementary number theory book. It's about quadratic irrationals. So we're looking at definition 5.5.1 here about what is a quadratic irrational. And it is a real number that satisfies a quadratic polynomial with coefficients that are rational numbers. So like for example, one plus root five all over two is a quadratic irrational, right? We know it satisfies, uh, I think it's x squared minus x minus one. And so remember this is the golden ratio. And the connection here, right, is we've already looked at this fraction in a previous video and earlier in this textbook. One plus root five over two has the continued fraction representation that is a uh, one every time. And it's an infinite continued fraction, meaning that uh, it doesn't truncate anywhere. Right? It's always just um, plus one on the bottom. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go over and we'll look at Sage. There's like a pretty easy way to, uh, you know, given a quadratic irrational, can I get Sage to tell me the uh, continued fraction representation? And that's this little code down here. Um, something to notice about the code though, it didn't print it very well in the textbook, um, that there should be an indentation here since we're defining this sort of like as a function. And so let me go, I think I've got Sage pulled up here. All right, so we see that we've got uh, our function here, we just copy paste it over from Sage, where CF stands for continued fraction, SQRT for square root, and you tell it what D is. And so you see that D uh, is an input here. And the other input of this is you tell it how precise you want it to be, that's bits. So like what Sage will do is it'll take that, and it'll save it as X, and it'll compute real field bits of D, right? So like how precise do you want to approximate square root of two if D is two, and then it'll just spit out the continued fraction representation of that. So that's continued fractions already a built-in function. So just to kind of recreate what's going on over here, I'll do uh, CF SQRTD of, what if my D was 389 like it has over here? And what if I wanted this to 50 bits? And so, and it spits out the same code that they have over there on that side. So just to see that it works. So that's as much as I want to do with Sage for this video. Uh, what I want to get down to is looking at the periodic continued fractions. And so what are these periodic continued fractions? Um, and so what is it? Well, I've got a continued fraction. Sorry, I got ahead of myself there. I've got a continued fraction that looks like a zero, a one through a n, and it goes on forever, so it's infinite here, say. But what should happen uh, at some point? A n should be the same thing as a n plus h for some fixed positive integer h and all sufficiently large n. So again, by this all sufficiently large n language, that's saying that eventually there should be some repetition, and that's what we're going to use the word periodic to to stand for. Think about there should be some kind of a pattern that repeats. Now. Uh, the smallest h for which you get a string of uh, numbers that repeats, the smallest or minimal such h is what we'll call the period of the continued fraction. So I've got a little example. We just saw above that uh, the golden ratio, 1 plus root 5 over 2. I know that its representation is all these 1s here. And I don't necessarily care about the fact that the inputs of the continued fraction here are all 1s. What I care about is like, when does some repetition start? And what I see is that repetition starts immediately, right? So in other words, like a n is equal to a n plus one for all n. And so uh, one is my h is all that I'm getting at here. So the period of this thing ought to be one. And I think I'm gonna write that down in a similar way. I see that the input of the continued fraction or each component, whatever you wanna call it, is always one. Uh, and so therefore the period is one because again, all the entries a n is equal to a n plus one for every single n. Great. On the next page though, is kind of like, uh, how do you compute some of these um, quadratic irrationals by hand say? So, um, and maybe another question is, okay, if I've got a periodic fraction, could I figure out what, what number does this represent? And so, uh, in other words, what does it converge to? Remember, we can think about these as like a limit. And so to kind of make that connection between this and a limit, uh, remember this, this is some infinite um, process here. And so again, like what's, what does this want to converge to? So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's, let's let alpha stand for all that good stuff there. And so what does the above say then? And you'll see why I'm highlighting in a moment too. The above says that, well, alpha is equal to one plus one over two plus blah, blah, blah. And the thing that I want to notice is, you know, this fraction goes on forever. What if I just highlight or zoom in on this part right here? What I'm trying to say is that that little part that I've highlighted, it's the same as just the whole fraction, right? If this is allowed to go on forever, then these should be the same quantity. So that is really alpha right there. And what that allows us to do is set up a much nicer equation that I can actually solve for alpha. So alpha, just kind of copy paste here, and now I'm going to substitute. Well, that's the same thing as one plus two 
uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over alpha. And so we will try to just solve this equation for alpha now, which like you could do in college algebra, say. So the way we're going to go about it, I'll try to show some steps here. We'll clear fractions. And uh, if I do that, what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this by alpha and distribute. That's how I got 2 alpha plus 1 downstairs and an alpha upstairs in the next line. And I'm going to take this 2 alpha plus 1. I'm going to multiply it over uh, I'm clear fractions finally. And uh, what do you see we get here? We're going to distribute this alpha next. And we're going to combine some like terms over on this side. And then finally, I don't know about you, I like having everything. I like having 0 on this side and then my positive squared thing on this side because that helps me keep track of the quadratic formula, which is in the next step. So I'm going to apply the quadratic formula now to this quadratic equation in alpha. And of course, this is cool because the whole point of this question is to find what alpha is. And so the quadratic formula will now tell me what it is. And when I do that, you know, I do my x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I apply that here. Notice as well that I know that alpha is this uh, continued fraction um, of 1, 2 repeated. And so like this is not a negative number. I know that for sure. So when I go down here and think about the continued fraction, or I'm sorry, when I think about the quadratic formula, I don't want the, you know, technically it's plus or minus, right? Like there's two possibilities for alpha. And there's really just one because I know alpha has to be positive in this case. And so I just want the plus there. And if you simplify this a little bit, you should get 1 plus root 3 over 2. So what did we just show? We just showed that this crazy infinite continued fraction, what does that really stand for? It's really the number 1 plus root 3 all over 2. So it was pretty cool. So what did that show me? There's this nice process where if you've got a periodic continued fraction, right? The idea here is like eventually you could look at the whole infinite continued fraction and you can kind of see that oh well there it is right there again and so you can always do this kind of business of your number equals eventually your number is going to show up on this side too so you can always repeat this and what that leads me to is maybe the the last part of the video just to mention this kind of big result in this section with no proof the proof is after this so go check out stein's book and read through the proof um, but what is it? So how do we characterize the periodic continued fractions? And this is very important. An infinite simple continued fraction is periodic. In other words, like it has some repetition in a pattern that keeps going if and only if. So exactly when it represents a quadratic irrational number. And so you should think about, you know, what exactly does that mean? Are there any other types of numbers that are periodic? Or uh, in this case too, are the quadratic irrationals always periodic? So think about what this theorem says and you could, I don't know, leave a comment maybe.